Hi everyone, this is John McKeever from Data Migrators here with another Metal CI video. Today we're going to have a quick look at Metal CI's compliance testing capability. So compliance is a way of testing your data stage job against a library of coding best practices which ship with Metal CI. We currently ship, I think, somewhere in the order of 45 coding rules, and they are shipped to you as source code. You can take them, modify them, get rid of the ones you don't like, create your own. We provide full documentation, and we'll have a look at a compliance rule shortly. But first, I just want to show you how you use them in a data stage designer environment. So I'm going to go to the tools menu for this job I have open. I'm going to select custom and I'm going to select Metal CI check compliance. That takes us into the Metal CI user interface. It's already got my context, the project and the job name I had open. So I simply hit run compliance. So behind the scenes, what's happened is Metal CI has reached into our data stage development environment, exported our job, gone to our Git repository and got the latest definition of our coding standards and put those together using some in-memory graph technology. And uh, in this case, we've got 28 parallel job rules. And uh, that comparison took just a few seconds. And if we just have a look at the type of rules that we, uh, that we provide with Metal CI, you can see we've got what you would expect, looking for unique sorts, looking for too many stages in a job, stage naming. Uh, we've got a system time dependency rule, which we've failed. We'll have a look at that shortly and a whole bunch of other, uh, what we think very valid and uh, relevant coding standards. Let's filter down on our failures. And you can see that we've got three failures. One is stage naming. And over here, we look at the description and it says that the this particular stage, TRX check and TX of type transformer has an incorrectly formatted name and it gives me the regular expression that that stage should be. So I'll go off and fix that before we move on. Here's that stage, and we can see that it is labeled TRX and it should be TX. So I fixed that. Let's go back and have a look at the next failure a system time dependency. Now, this is a big one, particularly in relation to Metal CI's automated unit testing. And if you haven't seen the video on that, I'd encourage you to go and have a look. This means that uh, if I use a function in my job that references the system clock, then every time I run that job, I'm going to get new output values because obviously it's dependent upon the time and day that I run that job. It would be far better if those values were sourced from a job parameter. That way we could provide the system clock information at runtime if we wanted, but also from a testing perspective, we could stub that value out and use a default known value for successive runs so we get consistent output and could use that job in a testing scenario. So here it's telling me that a particular stage uh, uses a system time call. So I'm going to go off and have a look at that. And it happens to be in the same stage. And if I go down, I can see that one of my derivations is using the current timestamp call. So I'm going to replace that with a job parameter. And I'm going to use P global migration date. So I'm happy that I've made that fix. I'll OK that. And the final error I have is hard coded file paths. Stage DSGR account debtors of type data set has a hard coded path. And in fact, our rule has been extended here to go a step further to say that for these particular types of stages, I actually want to tell you the type of parameter or the name of the parameter that you should use. In this case, pglobal.datasetdir. So I'm going to go and find that. Of course, hard coding a file system reference impedes the portability of jobs between environments. So it means that my dev, my QA, and my prod environments all need to have exactly the same file system structure, which may be a problem in certain environments. It also means when you upgrade your environment, maybe from a legacy uh, soon to go out of support version of data stage to a new 11.7 version, it means that that new target platform also needs to follow exactly the same file system structure. 
So if we can parameterize those file system references, that gives us a way of uh, addressing that particular challenge. And we can in fact see here that my data set uh, file system reference is in fact hard coded. So I'll get rid of that and I'll replace it with the job parameter that it told me to, because I'm very obedient. P global dataset dir good. So I think I've addressed all of my compliance issues. I'm going to recompile and go back to my tools menu, custom, and check compliance once more. Run compliance. I'll open the log so you can see what's happening. And in just a few seconds, we have a compliance result, 28 rules passed, zero failures. So I mentioned that the compliance rules are provided to you as a source code repository. And that's delivered as a Git repo with each rule represented as a single file written in a language called Gremlin. So Gremlin is a, uh, an Apache project. It's a graph traversal language. It's uh, well uh, publicized, well documented. There are tutorials available. We've extended it slightly so that you can use words like stage and link rather than edge and vertex. And uh, let's have a look at an example rule in here. So we'll start with a very simple one. We had a project where we decided that two transformers adjacent to one another represented an optimization opportunity and we wanted to identify those. So here we have a graph query that identifies a stage of type transformer which has an output which is connected to a stage of type transformer. Very, very simple. And uh, there are many more, some, some are more complicated, but uh, as you can see, a Git repo, which is yours to take, adapt, configure exactly how you want, and uh, treat it as a set of templates that represent our advice, um, but certainly just a, a good starting point for you to embody your coding standards. That's it. Thanks very much for your time. See you in the next video.